Hi, I just got back from the gym. Welcome to exercise application video number 35. Um, today was a circuit style leg day, but what I want to actually talk about is heat injuries. So now is not really the time of year for it, um, given that tomorrow is December. But <clears throat> um, in the summertime, this is a very real issue in Georgia, especially with our like football athletes because they wear all the gear. And so um, when we think about heat injuries, if I had been doing today's like workout outside in say the middle of July, in the middle of the day, um, I could have had a lot of issues. And when we run into issues is when we um, get hyper hyperthermia, right? An elevated body temperature. And so similar to when I talked about hypothermia, there are certain things our body is able to do to kind of thermoregulate. So we can, we sweat actually, we vasodilate, and then our heat is brought to the surface of our body. And we're able to release that heat um, when we sweat. If we are in a drier environment, that can be evaporated in a more humid environment, which Georgia, hello, that can be a little more difficult because it's kind of the concept of moving from a high to low gradient. If there's already so much moisture in the air, um, our sweat's not really going to be too compelled to move into the environment. So we run into some issues there. Wind, we can get some convection, um, we get radiation, we get conduction, we can actually transfer our heat through another medium. So our body has all these ways to kind of naturally deal with that. Um, that being said, the more fit you are, the less likely you are to have heat injury. So by doing things like I'm doing today, I'm putting off heat injuries um, in the future, but I'm not really at risk because I train indoors. But if you do train outdoors, some of the things you can use to be cautious are um, the globe thermometers. So they have uh, the regular, the black, and the wet bulb. Um, the regular measures the shade in our, or heat, or temperature, excuse me, in the shade, black bulb measures temperature in direct sunlight, and a wet bulb measures your humidity. And they use this in things like the Army and uh, high school sports. They use this to determine kind of guidelines for practice. Um, in the event that someone does begin to have a heat injury, and symptoms like that can include uh, cramping, you become nauseated, start vomiting, um, dizziness, headaches, weakness. What you need to do is get them out of the heat. One of the best therapies for this is cold water immersion um, to drop the body temperature. But one of the best things you can actually do is um, acclimize yourself. So 10 to 14 days before an event, if at all possible, it's great to start training in that environment um, so that you can prevent those injuries. So same for like football training. You'd want to start earlier in the season working your way up before you just boom, full pads, middle of July. Um, so that's a little bit about heat injuries, which I'm not at risk for today. But if I ever got the urge to hit legs outside next July, these are things I would consider.